Styles declares he has best schlong ever after Little Things rumours. Where are the last of the summer wine cast now? Queen's funny joke about Harry and William during intimate meeting with Pam Ayres. Hello and welcome to Barely Contained, the online celebrity journalism podcast that dons a knotted hanky, rolls up its trouser legs and heads to Rill Sun Centre because summer is here. My name is Matt Withers and I'm joined, as ever, by Chris Beckett. Hello Matt, yes indeed, sun's out, pun's out. Yes, I mean, I don't know what it's like where you are. The sun's very much not out here, um, but that uh, that intro was written several days ago when the sun was uh, a bit out. I was going to say, I mean, earlier it, it sort of had its hat on, wasn't necessarily going out to play. <laughs> it's definitely not out anymore. No, I think summer's over, but what a fine one we had this year. It was a great, it was a great day and a half. <laughs> so Matt. What can you tell us that's been happening in the uh, celeb show business world? Well, I am starting off with a story that's on the uh, the website of the Daily Star, and it's a story headlined, Harry Styles declares he has best schlong ever after Little Things rumours. <laughs> it's great that he used that, uh, that audience with the Pope wisely. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's our first time, I think, discussing the erstwhile uh, One Direction uh, frontman. He, is he the frontman? Is it more of a democracy? I mean, for me, he will always be one. It will be 1D, you know. There's none, none of this solo solo nonsense. No, no. Well, he's concentrating on um, matters slightly more physical than than uh, than musical in this piece because it's got mm. the, uh, the subhead. Harry Styles was taking a trip down memory lane with a very cheeky reference to One Direction's hit best song ever as he made a cheeky quip about his penis size. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> cheeky little quip. Yeah. Harry Styles sent his fans wild as he declared he has the best schlong ever in a very cheeky post. Yeah, I mean, come on, Harry, less is more. <laughs> yeah. Come on. On Wednesday, Harry left a very telling snap on his Instagram stories, posing next to a portaloo in a shimmering turquoise and pink tracksuit. <laughs> I love the fact that despite his uh, his millions and millions and being on the uh, you know the latest rich lists, um, he very much <laughs> has has the same sort of picture that you could imagine David Icke would appear in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on on here. So he, he left the very telling snap on his Instagram stories, which sounds like something like a, a an old person who doesn't really understand the information superhighway. Mm. They put it. Um, he's described as posing next to a portaloo. So I I hope for the reporter who wrote this sake, because it was an actual portaloo, because that company quite famously employs somebody to write to anybody who refers to it as a portaloo. If it's not, portaloo is of course the trade name, like Hoover, um, and I think yeah. it's used kind of like um, I don't know, temporary outdoor latrine. If it's not, <laughs> should, should they have capped this up? Probably, <laughs> yeah. Um, and the shimmering turquoise and pink tracksuit, well, I mean, you know, you say David, I because does bring to mind the erstwhile host of Jim will fix it. Oh yes. Oh dear. Yeah, it's not a good not a good time for that kind of look, is it? <laughs> no, I'm I would say that at no point in the last few years has that been a particularly good look. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, moving on. <laughs> grinning for the camera with his hands under his chin. Harry showed off the sign that had been taped to the door of the cubicle and read Best Schlong Ever, a dig at the One Direction hit track, Best Song Ever. Is it a dig? I mean, surely surely a riff. A riff, I would say. Yeah, it's just a little riff on it. Um, I, I, he's got his hands under his chin in the picture, probably doing the uh, the, the Jimmy Hill sign, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> almost, I mean, almost. If I know Styles, I mean, he was a he was a big fan of Match of the Day in the uh, you know late eighties. And although Harry tried his best to conceal the image by shrinking it down for his tongue and cheek post, 
fans went wild regardless. Yeah, you can't you can't <laughs> keep a good bunch of hardened social media followers down. <laughs> right, what have they got to say? One fan giggled. I feel like this joke had to start during One Direction. Mm. I, I, I'm not sure I get that. It's not not set a very high bar. <laughs> well, I don't know how they know that the fan was giggling. I don't know if you can tell from reading uh, a social media post that somebody was a chuckling or perhaps even guffawing as they typed it in. Well, maybe maybe they left the, the classic tears of laughter emoji. <laughs> well, someone else begged, prove it. And another fan gushed. He is so unhinged. <laughs> Gushed. Were you gushed at somebody? God, he's mentally ill. <laughs> he's, he's having severe what? health difficulties. They gushed. <laughs> oh, it's not just Harry's claim either, as his pal Ed Sheeran has backed up the rumours of his rather large package in the past. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. I love the fact that all these kind of like A-list pop stars just kind of sit around, you know, comparing. Well, I mean, they probably they almost certainly do. <laughs> In 2015, Ed was asked if he wrote the song Little Things for the boy band about their literal little things. But Ed was quick to shut that speculation down. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you needed to do that. You needed to nip that in the bud. Yeah, I know I know that speculation was raging for literally days before Sharon stepped in. He explained to New Zealand ZM Online... Harry definitely hasn't got a little thing. So, no, I did not write little things about little things. Said them online. <laughs> it sounds like some retro games publication. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. When the stars speak, they speak to ZM online, as long as those stars are Archie McLean and the Oliver <laughs> Twins. And that is a very <laughs> niche joke. <laughs> you can get a free Jet Set Willy soundtrack. <laughs> Harry has, so far, avoided bearing his intimates to the general public and had a strict no-penis clause in his My Policeman film contract. Oh, he's so far avoided bearing his intimates to the general public. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's almost like a, but on tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally, he's just going to whop it out. Um, I don't remember the film My Policeman. Um, I think it's quite new. Um, yes, I think, um, as you may not be uh, stunned to, to discover, I think he plays a policeman in it. Oh, OK. So it's, it's a very prosaic um, film title. Yes, and it's not a reference to his penis. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's not what he called it, as far as we know. <laughs> he confessed on the Howard Stern show, it does feel vulnerable. I'd never kissed anyone on camera before, and it felt like giving a part of myself away in some ways. You lovey styles. <laughs> I wasn't naked in Don't Worry, Darling. I was naked in My Policeman. There's no peen in the final cut. There's Bum Bum. I don't think the peen was intended to be involved. How old is this man? <laughs> I was going to say, this is very much, uh, you know, nursery language. <laughs> It sounds like a six-year-old who's just learned these words for the first time and is going to use them constantly for the next 12 months. He continues, The peen, it was pre-negotiated that that would remain my own. Oh, I look <laughs> forward to, you know, speaking to the person who laid that contract out. <laughs> yeah, the the, the high-powered lawyer that they had to bring on board. <laughs> and on filming sex scenes, the most important thing for Harry is trust. He added, mm -hmm. if you remember that the most important thing on the set is the two human beings doing it, if at one point either one of you is uncomfortable, I think having the conversation where it's like, it doesn't matter if they're getting great stuff, if you don't feel good, you tell me, we'll stop. Well, I think that's, you know, that's good. Good. I mean, we can't argue with that. Good advice for anybody making that sort of film, which yes. I, I would not imagine are many of the people currently listening to this podcast. Chris, um, I believe you've got an article from the Daily Express online with a headline. I think quite a few people may be able to answer quite quickly. Yes. <laughs> and this story, uh, Matt, the headline is, Where are the last of the summer wine cast now? 
the dead Chris, the dead. <laughs> I mean, we could have spun that out, but yes, <laughs> fair. Yeah, I mean, if you want to know a specific cemetery, <laughs> we we could we could do it. We could do a whole tour. <laughs> Should we delve into this a little bit, despite the fact that I, I think, think we we all know where the last of the summer wine cast are now? Yes, let's uh, let's ex- exhume the rest of this story. Uh, last of the summer wine remains a much loved British sitcom since it finished airing in 2010. Where are the cast now? They're dead. <laughs> Last of the Summer Wine aired on the BBC with the first episode launching in 1973 and it ran up to 2010. The beloved series was set and filmed in and around Home Firth in West Yorkshire and followed three elderly men and their misadventures. It certainly did. <laughs> the trio consisted of the mischievous compost Simonites. I didn't know he was called, his surname was Simonites. I didn't know that. Did you? You know, so I have learned something from this. That is a very interesting surname. Um, okay, so yeah, sorry. Um, mischievous Compo Simonite, played by Bill Owen, easygoing Norman Clegg, Peter Salis, and arrogant Cyril Blamire, Michael Bates. Simonite sounds like it could be from the Bible. You could imagine, you know, the Simonites came down from Mount Sinai on a bath with some wheels. Yeah, or wasn't there that that horror film with uh, Clive Barker? You know, like you you open the you open the evil box and the Simonites come and yeah <laughs> strip your flesh away. Yeah, on a, on a bath with some wheels. On a, probably yeah, <laughs> in and around Yorkshire. So it doesn't it doesn't feel that bad because you're in you're in God's yeah. own country. Yeah, because the, the the surroundings are so beautiful. Well, well, you're being flayed to death. <laughs> Anyway, uh, when Michael had to leave this show in 1976 after just two series, he was replaced by Brian Wilde, who starred as Walter C. Foggy Dewhurst. Yeah, poor old Michael. He was very much the uh, Pete Best. Very the, uh... much, yeah. <laughs> Last of the Summer Wine continued to bring in huge viewing figures, despite many fans believing the quality had declined. I don't know. How we we know that the fans believe the quality of the climb because there was no Twitter in 1976. Yeah, there was was no people going on Instagram. No. So we sing their discontent. Had to rely on as soon as each episode ended, people would poke their heads out of their windows and shout into the street, it is not as good as it used to be. (laughs) Hashtag Nora Batty. (laughs) Express.co.uk is look back on where the cast of The Last of the Summer Wine are now. They're dead. <laughs> Norman Clegg, Peter Salis. Peter Salis was a British actor who was also known for voicing Wallace in the animated Wallace and Gromit films. And this sounds, you know, not to prejudge, but it does sound like this is heavily, heavily wikipedia Yep. He starred in Last of the Summer Wine from its debut until the final episode, making him the only actor to appear in all 295 episodes. Wow, that is a lot of episodes, Never to be lost. fair. Peter also played Norman Clegg's father in the prequel series First of a Summer Wine. The actor died aged 96 back in June 2017 at Denville Hall, a professional actor's retirement home. He was buried next to fellow Last of the Summer Wine actor Bill Owen, which <laughs> it's a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when we get on to Bill Owen. Where's Bill Owen we now? We know where he is. <laughs> One of his last acting roles was in the TV show Wallace and Gromit's World of Invention. Okay, right. Compost him tonight. Bill Owen. Oh, I think I know this one. I think he's <laughs> he was dead. An English actor. He's buried next to Peter Salis. <laughs> Where's the bath buried? <laughs> <laughs> he was an English actor who played Compo for more than 25 years. He died age 85 in 1999 after battling patri- pancreatic and bowel cancer, having first fallen ill while filming the series. Bill continued working right up to his death, with his last on-screen appearance being in April 2000. Hang, Hang on. on. <laughs> Hang on. I think, you, I think you he have appeared spotted... after he died? Yeah, he died in 1999, but his last appearance was in 2000. Oh, hang on. Maybe it's, um, you know, you know, like those those Hollywood films, like, you know, that they've actually been, they will come out in like 2026, but they've already been filmed. Oh, maybe that, possibly. maybe Last of the Summer Wine was well ahead of the game. 
Ah, see, I always assumed Last Summer Wine went out live, and that so there was the <laughs> the, the added threat with the the bath on wheels, you know? Oh, I, know I thought it was a, I thought it was a documentary. <laughs> Cyril Blamir, Michael Bates. Michael Bates was a British actor born in India who starred in, in Eight Half Hot Mum and Clockwork Orange. He died aged 57 back in 1978 following a battle with cancer and left behind three children. His final TV appearance was as Bearer Ranji Ram in It Aren't It Ain't Half Hot Mum in 1977. I tell you what, I'll be disappointed if there isn't a spin-off from this uh, from this story like where are the cast of It Ain't Half Hot Mum. <laughs> I think it's quite odd that he's he's best known for Last of Summer Wine, It Ain't Half Hot Mum, and A Clockwork Orange. One, one of these things is not like the others. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, you can see you can see the lineage between uh, Clockwork Orange and Last of the Summer Wine, but <laughs> yeah. It Ain't Half Hot Mum. I mean, it really stands out. Boggy Dewhurst, Brian Wilde. Brian Wilde was a comedy actor known for his role in Porridge and was a staple of British TV. The father of two died aged 80 in March 2008 after suffering a fall from which he never recovered. He died in his sleep at home and is survived by his wife, son and daughter. Hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, here, yeah, it's just, is any, are any of these alive? Any of these people I alive? Think, I think there might be. Um, I mean, we won't go through all of them because we, we're very much getting into the B list. But I, I do like um, uh, Frank Thornton, who played Truly Truly. Oh, yeah. He died of natural causes aged 92 in March 2013. One of his last roles was as a man getting off a bus in the film Run for Your Wife. Oh, I mean, that, that was classic. <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't he wasn't recognised by the Academy <laughs> that year. Uh, we've got a couple here, if, if you, you move down. Um, who oh, are quite famous oh, Russ Abbott. Died, of course. Hang on, yeah. Hobbo Hobdyke, Russ Abbott. Russ Abbott, an English musician and actor who's known for being in the band Black, Ab Black Abbots. He went on to have his own weekly comedy sh show on TV and joined Last of the Summer Wine in 2008. He's now 74 years old and the father of four, married to Patricia Simpson. In, in December 2020, he endorsed a campaign to get the song Atmosphere to number one for Christmas. Oh, sadly, an unsuccessful campaign. Wow. I mean, yeah. Oh, Al Alvin Smedley, Brian Murphy... British English actor and comedian who starred in Man About the House and George and Mildred joined the cast in 2003 and stayed until the show's final season. Father of two is now 89 and still still appears to be acting with his latest <laughs> role being in 2021. I mean, sometimes when people get that old, you, it's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, I can't, he looks are acting? like he's acting. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you sure you're acting? <laughs> oh, Bert Kwok, he was in it. Electric and Whistle, uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, one of his last appearances was Whatever Happened to Harry Hill in 2012. And uh, yeah, Billy Hardcastle played Keith Clifford. Keith Clifford from Halifax played the role of Billy from 1999 until 2006. He decided to leave after the 27th series and went on to make guest appearances in Christmas Lights and Coronation Street. Yeah. I don't know about you, Matt. I, all, I always thought after the 26th series, it really started <laughs> yeah. going downhill. Yeah, I mean, literally... It, in it's a bath. bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like after the 27 series, they'd, they'd probably run out of ideas by that point. Yeah. God. He's now 84 years old and has four children, twin sons and two daughters. Last of the summer wine the story of is on my five. <laughs> wow. I will certainly be checking it out. What a great story that is. <laughs> um, just a few comments on here. Rum Fellow says, what a cheery article. <laughs> yep. Uh, Lindsay H says, I collected Peter Salis from London Airport one evening. One of the nicest men I've ever met, so gentle and funny, came home and told my son, but he was clueless until I mentioned Wallace and Gromit. Then his eyes lit up, and for a whole five minutes, I was a hero. Um, exactly. I don't, I don't know how long ago that was to still refer to it as London Airport. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> generic London airport <laughs> but I just think as well you know you, you see all these uh you know like Harry Potter fans seeing you know Dame Maggie Smith and um you know Robbie Coltrane and Emma Thompson in the in the series and, and not knowing their earlier work I mean to to just be a fan of Wallace and Gromit and not know the original Salis vehicle <laughs> I mean 
you've got 20, 28 series to catch up with. Oh, imagine, imagine though, knowing that you've got them all ahead of you. God, 20, 295 episodes and he's in every one. So there's no <laughs> excuse. Right, Matt, uh, moving on from that slightly uh, morbid tale, perhaps you could talk to us about someone who, uh, well, let's be honest, they're, they're not with us anymore either. But, um, you know, it's a, it's an interesting royal tale. It is. It's also from the Express and it's headlined Queen's funny joke about Harry and William during intimate meeting with Pam Ayres. OK, well, <laughs> two things. Um, funny is in, <laughs> in single quote mark. Yes. So it makes me, you know, think we we could be having to judge this particular joke. Um, and then, I mean, you know, you want to be on your game for a meeting with Pam Ayres yes. in, any, in any case, but an intimate meeting, it, it, doubly so, I'd have thought. A very intimate meeting between the late Queen and the um, I wish I'd looked after my teeth poem maker. Um, so. And... and Lest we be sent to the tower, you know, it's inter- intimate meeting as in, you know, just meeting them, I imagine, one-on-one rather than any sort of Harry Styles nonsense. Yeah, there's no um, indication here of uh, anything like that. Um, the subhead is exclusive. Poet Pam Ayres opened up to express.co.uk about her candid meeting with the late Queen and her funny comment about her grandsons, Prince Harry and Prince William. Yeah, and this is the story they all wanted so, <laughs> yeah. to, to land this one. Yeah, I mean, some asses are getting kicked in the offices of the New York Times. <laughs> Pam Ayres is one of the country's most beloved poets, having gained public recognition following her 1975 appearance on Opportunity Knox. She landed numerous radio and TV gigs as a result and was even invited to perform for Queen Elizabeth on several occasions. Hmm. One particularly memorable meeting with the late monarch came when Pam was asked to make a speech at Sandringham in 2004. We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> yes. The mother of two was then able to meet the Queen in a more cordial way when she was invited to have tea. Oh, I bet the Queen really let her hair down with right. those cordial teas. Um, strap yourselves in for this next line. Uh, listeners, because um, Pam is going to be sharing an insight into their meeting. Okay. No holds barred. Sharing an insight into their meeting, Pam described the Queen as nice and funny. Bloody hell. Yeah. (laughs) It's the exclusive they all wanted. We haven't even got a funny comment yet. I can't believe they didn't put that in the headline. Pam also revealed that she even made a witty remark about her grandsons, Prince William and Harry, who would have been 22 and 20 at the time. Okay, I'm ready for this royal mic drop. The comedian recalled to express.co.uk, I was talking about how much our teenage sons ate, and she was saying that William and Harry were just the same, and they came out and cleaned them out of all their food. Wow. That's the funny joke. <laughs> God, it's the way she tells them. <laughs> you know, with with courtiers glaring at you, making you laugh. Yeah. I, I think she was kind of like the original Bill Hicks. <laughs> yeah. So so anti establishment. That's <laughs> that's the thing I always thought. That's the thing I always thought about Queen yeah. Elizabeth II. Yeah, anti establishment. <laughs> it was a nice funny chat, friendly. But there was an aura. There was an aura that you wouldn't find with anybody else. You knew that she was the queen. She'd (laughs) taken her crown off and put it on the table. (laughs) It was so relaxed, cordial. (laughs) Pam explains that she was particularly taken aback when the queen poured the tea herself. Wow. Describing the special moment... Pam reminisced, for the Queen to pour the tea, that's an unusual experience that I was privileged to have. I mean, if if I'd have been Pam, I'd have literally just held my hands out in a cupping motion (laughs) and just said, pour the boiling hot liquid into my hands. The spence with the unnecessary frippery of the crockery. Then she (laughs) uh, 
she lays out exactly how this this uh, this this happened. She said, "Shall I pour?" And off she went. She just didn't. She didn't stand on ceremony. The Queen, <laughs> <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II. That's what they always said about her. She had no airs and graces about her. <laughs> Um, and then it just goes into a bit about um, Pam's new um, children's book, uh, which is called I Am Oliver the Otter. It's mean, um, but... very much, you know, a, na- a natural progression of the story. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to get into that. It was very much about the Queen's funny comment and her selfless pouring of the tea. Yeah, wow. Uh, and that, it. Chris, I think... Um, I don't... I can't take any more. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what, a, what a great episode. Yeah, there's been some absolute belters in the world of online celebrity journalism this month. Um, and listener, it's been our privilege to share them with you. Yeah, it really has. Um, we'll be back on July the the, the 1st. Um, but in the interim, Chris, why not lay it on the line as to what people should be doing in the social media world? Hey, you know, I will do. Um, um, For a change, I'll talk about Facebook first. So, yeah, go on to Facebook, barely contain the podcast. Um, You'll find all sorts of, uh, you know, bonus content, back full back catalogue. Or if you're on Twitter, go to at barely underscore pod. Um, And, yeah, you can uh, interact with us there. Please do. Um, and while you're there on the internet, why not go to your podcatcher of choice, whatever you're listening to this episode on, be that Spotify or Apple or Google or, or Amazon, uh, leave us a, a review, five stars, please. Uh, it really does help us get in front of more uh, ears as, 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 as we possibly can. Um, and then, you know, just spread the word out there. Why, why not take to Twitter, as so many people do these days, to uh, to give your thoughts or indeed like TV fans back in 1976, just have a shout outside of your window. Exactly, yeah. I mean, yeah, where where are the Wright brothers now? <laughs> <laughs> They're dead, Chris. Okay, They're dead. <laughs> just checking. Right, so we will be back on the 1st of July. Thanks so much for giving us this listen. We will see you next time. Uh, bye-bye, and bye-bye to you, Chris Beckett. Bye-bye, Matt. Cheerio. Farewell. Thanks, guys. See ya.